Russell, I want to start off talking about the quote unquote sleep hormone melatonin. People these days want to make sure they're protecting it by blocking blue light. A lot of people are supplementing with it. But when it comes to sleep, it's not everything that it's cracked up to be. So I'll have you talk about that to kick off. Yeah, there's a couple of really interesting issues there, both melatonin and blue light. So the shorthand for melatonin that you read all the time is that it's a sleep hormone. And it most emphatically is not. It's a mild modulator of sleep at best, and not in everybody, about 70% of people. So what we know about melatonin is that the circadian clock uh, drives up, it anticipates darkness, so melatonin rises, it peaks at around about three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, depends on who you are, and then anticipating dawn, it then goes goes back down again. Uh, so if you don't produce melatonin, and many people on beta block blockers will only produce, you know, very low levels of melatonin, and if you're a quadriplegic, then you don't produce any melatonin at all. And in studies, I mean, so the quadriplegic study is very interesting because they were reported to have terrible sleep. And it was thought, okay, well, they're not producing pineal melatonin, therefore it's the sleep hormone. Well, actually, quadriplegic sleep is no worse than paraplegic sleep. Um, and they produce norm normal me levels of melatonin. People on beta blockers um, have mild changes in their sleep, um, but really it's not very marked. So when you take melatonin half an hour or so before bedtime, uh, and around about, let's say, five milligrams. It, the best study ever published showed that it will reduce the time it takes to get to sleep by about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, and that's it. Uh, it can also probably enhance your, um, your ability to adapt to a new time zone and, and be a mild, uh, a, a mild modulator of jet lag, but it is, it is not a sleep hormone. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of nonsense talked about it out there. I mean, you know, a few, few years ago, there was a whole business about melatonin being an antioxidant and an anti-cancer drug. And people were going around saying, ah, oh, well, the doubling in childhood leukemias since the 1950s. It's because children are using nightlights, which suppress melatonin, um, and therefore taking away this, this, this cancer, anti-cancer agent. Um, it's just nonsense. The amount of light you get from a nightlight is never going to suppress melatonin. And in fact, you need quite a bit of light to suppress melatonin. So, yeah. I want to get into the light piece, but to highlight what you just said there, when melatonin could be useful as a supplement would be if somebody is is traveling and they're going into a new time zone, it could help with that adjustment. Or there was the one study where it could help somebody fall asleep a bit quicker. Yeah, but it, yeah. in general, melatonin is overhyped when it comes to sleep. Absolutely. Yes. There's probably a placebo effect. Um, w a lot of uh, individuals with uh, children with neurodevelopmental disorders the parents often try and help uh, their children sleep with melatonin, and the results are very mixed. There's nothing else really out there. Uh, we can talk about new drug development later on. Uh, and I think that's why people have become obsessed by melatonin and, in fact, tried to use uh, new compounds synthesized that will uh, mimic the effects of melatonin on melatonin receptors. So there are other drugs out there which you can patent and then sell for quite a lot of money. Let's get into the light piece and tie it into melatonin. You mentioned the night light and how it takes a lot of light to impact our melatonin production. Now we're, the grounds are getting shaky whether that really even matters or not. But well, let's talk about how light fits in. And then let's talk about our endogenous melatonin production. And we've been kind of focusing on the, the supplemental. And let's talk about the melatonin we make and whether that's important or not. So uh, light is critically important for setting our internal biological clock, our circadian rhythms, to the external world. And so the light-dark cycle sets the master clock within the brain in a structure, a paired structure called the supra chiasmatic nuclei, and via a multisynaptic projection via the sympathetic nervous system, it innovates the pineal, and then it regulates its, its output. And what's fascinating is that the duration of melatonin release uh, 
um, expands and contracts throughout the seasons. It's a, it's a nice measure of dark length. Now, in humans, we don't know if that expanding and contracting melatonin profile is doing anything. However, in seasonally breeding mammals, so deer, sheep, uh, in the autumn, the expanded night length, uh, encodes the fact that it's autumn and that will trigger reproduction. Uh, so pe- uh, these, these, these large mammals will breed. The, uh, young will be gestating over the winter months to be born in the spring when there's lots of new grass to, 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 to generate milk production in the mum, uh, and, 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 and lots of food for, for weaning. And, and there, melatonin has an absolutely critical role. So for seasonal biology. Uh, it's un, it, it, there's no clear evidence that it's having a big effect upon, uh, our seasonal biology. We do show seasonal rhythms, uh, interestingly enough. And in the pre-industrial era, there were, um, sort of times of the year where there were more children produced than other times of the year. But again, whether it was social factors or whether it was driven by, you know, like in sheep, a melatonin profile, we, we don't know. Is there any value in melatonin in humans then? We're, we're debunking a lot of stuff here. And you talked about in animals how there can be value with reproduction. But have we figured out any benefits of melatonin in the human body? Well, I, I tend to think of um, melatonin as a bit like a reinforcing agent. So light comes in, hits the molecular clock and aligns it to the external world. And then via this, this loop and the pineal, melatonin is produced and we know that there are melatonin receptors in the master clock and so it's probably acting to reinforce the direct light input from the eye to the master clock so it's sort of i I suppose a bit of a stabilizer that's that's how i would think of melatonin if you enjoyed that clip press here for the full episode i'll see you over there so the shorthand for melatonin that you read all the time is that it's a sleep hormone and it most emphatically is not. But what does caffeine do? Well, it blocks adenosine receptors within the brain. So it masks...